Hi, thank you so much for inviting me to your home so that I can help you plan your next dinner party. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. And all I'm going to do is help you plan the whole thing and make sure you don't overlook any important details so that your dinner party goes off with a huge success and allows you to also relax during your dinner party so that you can better enjoy your guests while they're there instead of worrying about all of the little details. So that's what I'm here for, to figure out what all the details are to put your dinner party together so it'll be delicious food and wonderful company and everything is planned perfectly in advance. Okay. Terrific. And at any time, if you have any questions about anything, please feel free to ask. Okay. Now, I have here in front of me a very large stack of cookbooks right here. And there's quite a few of them, and I'll be going through some of those with you in a moment, but first what I'd like to do is I want to get a little bit of information about your dinner party first, okay? All right, so I have the date for it, which is in about two weeks, right? And that's on a Saturday night. Okay, now, um, how many guests will you be inviting? Eight total? Is that total including yourself? Okay, great. That's a good even number. Makes things a little easier. Okay, so eight people. And um, can I just have the first names of each of your guests, please? Your Diane or Daniel, your Daniel, I think, or both. Okay, all right, so that's wonderful. I have all of the um, all of the guests for your dinner party and uh, all of their names so that we can make out some place tags for each of your guests. That's what I need those names for. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. All right. Now, what will... Do you have a particular theme for the dinner party or a topic um, like the, for the type of cuisine that you're going to be serving or anything like that? Okay. And you don't need a theme, actually. Um... Some people just want to have a nice, just a casual dinner party, for example, or maybe a more formal dinner party or anything like that. So. Okay. So, oh, okay. So this is for a special event then. Okay. Special event. It's a, it's a birthday dinner. Okay. And which guest is having the birthday? Okay. So it's Barbara. star by your name. Okay? So we have a birthday dinner, basically. Fantastic. Birthday dinners are so fun. All right. Okay. Now, 
did you have any ideas about the type of cuisine that you would like to serve for your meal? No? Okay. And that's fine. Um, that's what I'm here for, to help you come up with something. We can help. We'll come up with a menu plan for your dinner party very shortly, okay? All right. Okay. And as far as drinks and wine, will that be provided by you, or will your guests be bringing some of that? Okay, so, all right. So some of your guests will be bringing some of the wine. Okay, that's great. So you probably plan maybe just to provide about two or three bottles of wine, um, just in case you have, it's better to have too much than too little. Okay. Just make a note of this. is the dinner going to be taking place? Okay. Seven o'clock? Okay. Okay. And, um, uh, is that the table over there that I can see from the, from the kitchen? That you'll be, okay. That looks at your dining room table. It's a beautiful table and a beautiful space. So I'm sure we can work with that very easily. So, I've got all of that here. Seven, eight, okay. All right. Now, let's talk about what you're going to serve the guests for dinner, because that's obviously the most important part of a dinner party, right? Okay. So, I might come up with some additional questions as we go on. But, uh, what we will do eventually also is a seating chart for your guests. Okay. Great. Okay, so, I have a whole bunch of books here. Uh, these are all cookbooks, obviously, and what we're going to do is I'm going to sort of go through some of them and you can see what catches your interest as far as the type of food that each of these books uh, specialize in. And then we can take it from there and investigate some actual recipes in the books to start building a menu. All right? Great. Now, let's start with... Uh, let's take a look down here. Now, if you're interested in doing a type of French cuisine, I have this book here, and this one is called Cuisine Rapide, and it's written by Pierre Frenet, who was a, um, he was the author of the 60 Minute Gourmet that was published in the New York Times um, a number of years ago. And uh, this is one of the books that he wrote. And the wonderful thing about this book is that he is like a, a very accomplished French chef. And all of the recipes for this book are quick and um, relatively easy to make, but they are still packed with flavor. And that's what I love about this book. And a lot of my clients, when I help them plan a dinner party, use a lot of the recipes from this book. So, so this is one of the options here. And now if you want to go for something that is very, um, has lots of flavor and more ethnic as far as the food, um, something that has lots of spice, then this is a fantastic book we can do. This is about, uh, the food of Morocco, basically. And you can see I've got a lot of different recipes already flagged in here because it's full of so many wonderful recipes and, and fantastic.
fantastic pictures of all of the food. As you can see, and so many wonderful dishes and flavors are just amazing. All of these different dishes from Morocco, they use wonderful spices and herbs in their dish, in their food, and um, as you can see, it's beautifully presented as well in this book. So that's the nice thing about this book is that it has lots of pictures of every dish, so you'll know exactly what it's going to look like. Okay, so this is a definitely an option to keep in mind. Now, there's another book, the French Cuisine, or the, the Cuisine Rapide book that I showed you. This would be sort of along the same, same lines, and this is a book called Fast Food My Way by Jacques Pepin, who is a very well-known French chef as well, and um, he later in his career, um, while Julia Child was still alive, the two of them paired up and made a number of shows on PBS, actually. So uh, he's also a very accomplished French chef and came up with a book of all these fast food recipes um, that are absolutely delicious with beautiful, authentic French flavors and without compromising quality or flavor. And this book, the nice thing is it also has pictures of all the different recipes. You take a look through so you can see some of the recipes that we can choose from this particular book. This is the dessert section, my favorite. So, and it's got appetizers, beautiful appetizers, and soups, which is good for a first course, especially on a nice fall day. So, this is another option. Now, if you want more wonderful flavors with exotic ingredients and um, that aren't very difficult to make. This is another good book. And this is Ottolenghi Simple and written by Yotam Ottolenghi, who is a wonderful cook and cookbook author. And he's got quite a few books. And this is one of his newest ones. And his the flavors that influence his food come from the Middle East and Israel and that part of the world in general. And this book is also wonderful if you have any guests who are vegetarian or vegan. And that's actually something I forgot to ask you earlier, but we'll get to that soon. Um, this book is wonderful for that because it has lots of wonderful recipes for vegetable dishes and um, just packed with flavor. And see, it's got lots of pictures again for all the recipes. And the, the recipes are relatively simple to make as well. So this is a good book for um, if you don't want to sp uh, spend too much time in the kitchen cooking, but still want wonderful, beautiful food. Okay. Now, another way that we can go is a very classical way. And this is an older cookbook. And this book is the uh, Mastering the Art of French Cooking by Julia Child. And this is my edition. 
uh, or my book. And this is a very early edition of the book as well. So this book contains lots of wonderful recipes, French food, of course, and it has lots of recipes from the French cuisine, and which is vast. Not many pictures in here, because when this book was, was written, you couldn't really put photographs in books, but there are illustrations here and there throughout to illustrate um, the food prep. And it's a very dense book, but if you're looking for a little bit more of a challenge and you want to provide your guests with haute cuisine or just a beautiful French meal, then this would be a good book to consult. Okay. And then last but not least is this book called Cocolat. And this is written by Alice Medrich. And this is a fantastic book of desserts and specifically chocolate desserts. And this one also has extraordinary pictures of all of the desserts, as you can see. They are absolutely beautiful desserts, and, and I will admit that they are a bit of a challenge, so if you're not up for doing some extravagant, elaborate dessert, like, like this, for example. The, the other books that I showed you all have sections for desserts. That would be a little less challenging, but because this is a dinner party for somebody that's having a birthday, I thought maybe you wanna just do something a little extra special for dessert, and um, we can consult this book and see if there's anything in here that you would like, okay? Now, before I forget, are any of your guests vegan or vegetarian? Okay, so two of your guests are vegetarian, all right. Which guests are those? Okay, all right. I just made a note here, they are vegetarian. And do any of your guests have any allergies, food allergies that you're aware of? Okay, so Daniel has a nut allergy. Okay, I'll just make a note of that here. Nut allergy, okay. All right, good. That's good to know. So that we don't pick a dessert, for example, or a main course that uses nuts, obviously. Okay. All righty. So now I would just like to ask you, did any of the cookbooks that I showed you, did any of them uh, catch your attention as the type of cuisine that you would like to do? Okay, so perhaps the Autolanky book you were thinking, all right. That's a great choice. Because there's so many wonderful recipes in here and uh, that I've made myself. And I have one of them flagged here for you. Okay, so why don't we pick some things out of this menu, or why don't we pick some things out of this cookbook uh, that you can use to make your meal? All right. So let's start with the first course. Okay. Let's find the appetizer section. Now, for the first course, we can do a, um, a, a salad or a soup or anything like that. Was there any preference? Okay, maybe, all right, no preference, so. Let's just look at some things here and see what looks good. Okay, there's a tomato and bread salad with anchovies and capers. That would be good. 
with this particular recipe. And um, now, is are the vegetarians, uh, are they pescatarians? Do they eat any fish or no? Well, they are. Okay. That helps. That gives us a few more options. So then this salad might work. It does have anchovies in it. So as long as they can have fish, then everything else in this particular recipe looks perfect for vegetarian. And let's see what else we have. We have cucumber and lamb's lettuce salad. Okay. This looks good. This is a watermelon, green apple, and lime salad. See how it looks. It looks delicious, doesn't it? Okay. These are all salads. Let's see. Let's see this. Okay. So now we have some other options here. More. Those were sort of salad raw vegetables, and now this chapter is cook veg. Cooked veg, it says. So there's soups here. There's this wonderful sounding here, the zucchini, pea, and basil soup. That sounds really delicious. And let's see what else here. This is a, it's called crushed zucchini. That sounds interesting. Very simple, but beautiful. Really, this one right here. It's like really beautiful presentation here. That could be good. And oh, this is a this is a fantastic dish. I've done this myself. And these are stuffed zucchini. And they're stuffed with pine nuts and tomatoes. And actually, this is a wonderful vegetarian dish too, so. Okay, so you like to go with this one? That's a good choice. Very good choice. Okay, let me just make a note of that. Okay, so we're going to do the, the starter or the first course. It's going to be the stuffed zucchini with See, this recipe is for how many people this serves. This They say this recipe serves two, so we'll have to, for eight people, we'll have to quadruple that. Okay, so we'll make a note of that. Although, oh, he says it's two for a main and four for a starter, so you wanted a starter, so we just double it. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's the first course all set. So let's take a look at now some of the dishes we can do for the for the main course. Okay, let's go a little further on in the book. What chapter? So many wonderful salad type recipes, like look at this. This is called a roasted butternut squash with lentils and dolce latte cheese. This one here. Doesn't that look delicious? This looks good too. This is carrots with a yogurt sauce on it. This is like that looks very filling. That could be a main course. So. Oh, you like that? Okay. Okay, I'll make, well actually I have this little ribbon here. Let me just put that there. And then we'll just keep looking at a few other dishes and we'll come back to that. If that's what you decide to go with. Okay. Uh, let's see. 
a very hearty salad type dinner. There's a, this is a whole roasted celery root with coriander seed oil. That looks really good. Oh, these look good too. These look really good too. Um, these are spinach and gorgonzola stuffed baked potatoes. Look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? I've also made that, and it is so delicious. The gorgonzola cheese is strong and pungent and adds a wonderful flavor to the dish. Okay. This is always fun. This is more of a side dish. This is um, potato, shallow fried potatoes with rosemary and sumac. Or actually, this one here, oven fries with oregano and feta cheese. It's very unusual. Can you see this? This is the one with rosemary. So they kind of look like fries, basically. And more potato dishes here. We've got rices, grains, and pulses. And pulses are usually beans. And there's some wonderful dishes here for that. This is a pui lentil and eggplant stew. Very nice looking. That's this dish right here. See that? Very hearty looking. Another eggplant dish. Oh, this is a lot of eggplant in this section here. Okay. Okay, let's see. Oh, here we are. This is the noodles and pasta section. Well, this looks good. This is soba noodles with lime cardamom and avocado. Doesn't that look delicious? It sounds so good too and so exotic with the cardamom in a um, in a pasta dish. It's very unusual. That looks really good, doesn't it? Oh, okay. So we'll do that as an option too. Okay. For the main course. Let me just write that down. any other options here to consider. That looks really good. And that's made with eggplant, so this is all vegetarian as well. This is another pasta dish. It's called pasta a la norma. And it's made primarily with um, just like a big piece of eggplant and looks like a beautiful red sauce with that. That looks good. Oh, this looks really good here, too. Another pasta dish. This is pappardelle with rose harissa, black olives, and capers with these nice big rustic noodles. Doesn't that look good? Oh, okay. Oh, you want to go with that? Okay. Let's just write it down then. I think that's a good choice because you can serve it, you can bring a large bowl of the pasta to the table and people can help themselves to however much they want. Okay, so we're going to have the
for the third course, which will be your dessert course. Is that right? Three course dinner. Okay. Now, I don't, let me just see. Okay, there are desserts in this book. Now, before we start consulting with desserts, would you be interested in looking at some of the things in this book? This is a bit more challenging and um, a little bit, they're more complicated. And, but if you're looking for something, uh, especially for a birthday dinner, which this is, this could provide a really a special dessert that you that will wow your guests. What do you think? You wanted to go for it? Okay. Oh, okay. So you took a pastry course in New York City a few years ago. Well, then I think you should go for this book right here. Okay. Let's take a look at some of the recipes. I've made a few in out of this book myself, and. They are very challenging, but the results are spectacular. So let me show you a few desserts that I think would be good. Uh, we can start with some of the that are a little less challenging, but still absolutely beautiful. Let's see here. Here's a good one. Uh, this is a, a chestnut chocolate tort. And it's very basic, as you can see here. Beautifully decorated. And basically, you just make a stencil, or you can buy a stencil out of parchment paper to get that design. Otherwise, it's a fairly simple cake. There's no icings or anything like that. And then you serve that with some whipped Chantilly cream and uh, this might be a good one. It's a beautiful looking cake, but not very complex and wonderful flavors too. Okay. Oh, this looks good. Now there's one particular one I was looking for. These are torts. This is called a tricolor mousse, and it is a bit involved because you have to make three different mousses and then layer them together like that. And then there's the challenge of making this beautiful, this sort of chocolate, tricolor chocolate, crinkly little or uh, ornament for the cake. Next page. This is a beautiful car um, a, a beautiful strawberry cake, and as you can see, it is a stunning, beautiful dessert. And creating with the strawberries, creating this beautiful sort of pattern around the outside of the dish, and then you have this beautiful icing with with the pattern on top. This is another stunning dessert that is, this one is um, a real beautiful showstopper of a dessert, but it's not horribly complex like some of the other ones. And it's primarily a chocolate tart shell, and then you pour in a beautiful, rich, very rich dark chocolate ganache, and then, and that's pretty much it, flavored with some beautiful liqueur, and then you use a stencil and to create this beautiful pattern that you make with cocoa powder in there, and uh, this is such a beautiful dessert, and if, 
And if any of the people at your dinner, especially the birthday person, is a chocolate lover, this is going to send them over the moon. Because it's so good. Oh, you'd like, okay, so you'd like to do this one? All right. Would you like to see any others first? Now, this is a dessert. I'm going to show it to you. Let me see, is this the one? I'll show it to you, but I know you've already made up your mind, but I want to show it to you anyway. Now, if you're looking for a real big challenge, this is a dessert that will do that. This is a beautiful, a chocolate ruffle, a chocolate ruffle tort. And as you can see, that would be a showstopper bring it, when you bring it to the table. But it is involved. There's quite a few steps and special skills that are needed, especially to create this chocolate ruffle that completely covers the top. That is a bit involved and takes a little bit of practice, but it's not terribly difficult. And if it's something you want to tackle. Okay. All right. So you go with the, the previous one, right? Okay. This is the bittersweet chocolate truffle tart. And I have to say that is an excellent choice because it is an absolutely delicious dessert. This one here, very good choice. And as you can see, the, uh, the instructions, they're not like pages and pages long because it is a relatively easy dessert to make. The hardest part is the crust, the dark crust. But if you've taken that pastry class, then you probably did dark crusts and that would be no problem for you. Okay, I'll just make a note of the dessert now. And your birthday guest is going to be absolutely thrilled with this tart. Okay, bitter. So I think that um, pretty much covers the entire meal, except one thing we do have to decide is for cocktails, what you would like to do for that. And I don't have a particular book here for cocktails, although I do have books for that. Um, but. I think you told me that you had an idea for a cocktail that you would like to do for this birthday, is that correct? Okay. And what, what kind of cocktail? Ah, Cure Royale. That is an excellent selection. Cure Royale. Because Cure Royale is, it's very, it's a classy drink because it's made with champagne and cassis and a little bit of cassis that gives it some sweetness and a beautiful pale color. And it looks beautiful, it looks very festive. And it's perfect, I think, to start off your meal. Okay, so we're gonna do Kira Royale. All right. Okay, and I think the only thing we should pick out is something that you can have with and serve with your drinks. And let's see, I think we'll go back to this Autolanghi book so that we can keep the vegetarian theme. Uh, let's take a look at the very, some of the things in the front of the book here. Brunch. I don't think we're going to be doing brunch at this particular dinner party. Maybe if they stay overnight. Okay, let's see here. We'll find some things. So we want things that people can eat with their hands pretty easily. 
And to be honest, I'm not finding very many things in this particular book just yet. Let's look back here a little further. Now, let me see. I don't know if this would be a good idea now. I don't think that will work. Okay. Baked potatoes are not a good uh, nibble to have with your drinks. Okay, let me just go. So, we might have to consult a different book for that. Uh, Seafood. Oh, ah, uh, oh, okay. I think this might actually be very good. Uh, this is smoked fish and parsnip cakes, and they're sort of they're little, basically a fish cake. You can see right here. Uh, this is them here. Now, this would be sort of more like a larger portion, but uh, you can turn anything like this into individual little, you know, pop-in-your-mouth portions just by making them a lot smaller. So you just make a tiny little little cake, and we can put a little dollop of cream, uh, sour cream on the top with some chives, and then you just pick that up and pop it in your mouth while you're drinking your Gear Royale. How does that sound? Do you like that? Okay. I think that'll be a good way to start. It gets really gets the appetite going for the rest of the meal, but yet it's also a bit filling as well. Okay, okay, let me write that down. So we'll do these. And the fish, they say smoked fish, so you can use haddock, um, smoked salmon, or any other smoked fish that we can find. So it's nice and versatile as well. Smoke fish parsnip cakes. Okay. So I think I've got the whole menu down here now. Uh, let me just check. I've got the start with Kiroyal's and that. And then we're going to have the stuffed dish, and we're going to end with the bittersweet chocolate truffle tart. That sounds incredible. I think I'd like to get invited to this dinner. Maybe another time. Okay. So there we go. One of the other things that I would like to go through with you is the glasses for for the various courses and the wines that are going to be served for your fantastic dinner party. All right. So I think what we'll do is we'll use this really beautiful flute glass. And uh, this one will be used for the Kir Royale. And you just put a little bit of cassis down here at the bottom of the glass, just a tiny little bit. And then the rest you simply fill up with really nice bubbly champagne. And uh, I think your guests are going to love this. So this is a good, a good glass to use for that particular course. Okay. And for the first course, um, probably you'll have a white wine of some kind, I would suggest. And this is a nice, uh, just a very simple white wine glass. And it, um, it's a perfect size for the white wine. And the white wine will be slightly chilled so that um, it's nice and cool and should be 
chill just a little bit more than red wine. And red wine should be, um, but we'll talk about the red wine soon. Uh, so this, will, this is the glass that then we'll use for the first course to serve the white wine, okay? And I recommend, if you're asking people to bring wine, um, a Chardonnay, probably a nice oaky Chardonnay, I think would go well with that first course because of the stuffed zucchini. I think that would be a really nice pairing of the food, of the wine with the food. Do you agree? Okay. Let me just make a note of that so I don't forget. So we'll pair a Chardonnay with that. Okay. Now for the main course, because you're having a, a very hearty pasta dish, um, I think you should serve a nice red wine and this is the glass that we'll use, a nice, a nice big bowl sort of glass uh, for the red wine and um, it allows the wine more exposure to the air and um, which helps the wine kind of open up um, a lot easier in a larger glass like this than it could in a smaller glass like this. Because white wine, we're not worried about that as much. But with red wine, you want it to open up a bit. And so you'll open the bottle about an hour before you serve the dinner and just set that aside. And then you can just simply serve the red wine in these beautiful big goblet glasses. Okay. Now the type of wine that I might recommend for the pasta dish is a Pinot Noir, would go very nice. It's sort of a lighter red wine. It's not too gutsy and um, it won't overpower the food. And another option is a Cabernet Sauvignon is another option. Uh, Cabernet was a bit more, a bit gutsier, more fruity and juicy than um, a Pinot Noir. And, but I think in this case, a Pinot Noir might be better because it will, it'll meld really nicely with this Papardelle pasta dish. So what would you like to go with? The Pinot Noir? Okay. Excellent choice. All right. And so then we'll serve the Pinot Noirs in this, di in this glass. Okay. So let me just make a note of that. So for the main course, we'll put Pinot Noir. Okay. It's wonderful. All right. All right. All right. So I think we've got all of that taken care of. And we have these lovely glasses. We've got the, uh, so we'll put the Cure Royale in here uh, and serve these. And actually, a good thing to do with these is to chill them if possible before you serve the Kiroyal. And then it keeps the glass nice and cold. And then we'll put the white wine, the Chardonnay, into this glass right here. And then we'll put the Pinot Noir to serve with the, um, the uh, pasta dish right here in this glass. This big, beautiful goblet type glass. Okay. Okay. So one thing I thought that would be nice to do um, a little different for your dinner party is for the cocktail uh, part of the dinner party at the very beginning, uh, instead of just using sort of those little paper cocktail napkins, I brought a selection of, these are all handmade cloth little small cocktail napkins like this. So the little like this. And I have a few different patterns here, so I thought we can maybe pick some of these out. And you can also mix and match. They don't all have to match uh, as well. And we can look through them and you can decide which ones would go best with um, with your decor here in your in your dining room. Okay. So these are really 
beautiful and colorful. And of course they come in, I have four each, but we can have eight each uh, delivered to you if you decide to pick any of these uh, and you want just one design, okay? So this is one option here. It's really pretty, very colorful. Maybe good for a birthday party, actually. Okay. These are really cute. These have uh, um, sort of music notes and music uh, instruments as well on there. So, and um, they're sort of black and white. So they're very sort of elegant and almost formal, but playful at the same time because of the pattern. So I've got four of these. Two, three, four. Yep. Okay. Let me just straighten them out. Okay. All right. Now we have this. This is a big, uh, a nice, bold, beautiful design. And this has sort of a metallic uh, metallic threads in the pattern, so they kind of, they're shiny, and they're all sort of a similar pattern, but each um, napkin is actually different. And this one has some blue in it, and this one has quite a bit of color in it, so it's cut from one piece, large piece of fabric with a large. Uh, pattern on it. So these are quite beautiful as well. And these are very nice and simple, sort of pink colored. And I noticed you have a few little pink accents in your dining area, so these might go well. Uh, very simple, almost like a sort of a very faint sort of leopard stripe pattern on these, but in pink. So maybe they're panther stripes, like the pink panther. Okay, so we've got four of these napkins. Now we have something here that's sort of a little more patriotic Probably not the best choice for this particular dinner party. If you were doing a, a 4th of July dinner party or uh, something of that nature. But I think in this case we can probably set, the, yeah, I think we can set those aside. And then the last pattern I have here, it's uh, for these napkins, it's uh, very, it's another it's sort of colorful and pretty but a little subdued the black, solid black background, like that. Okay. Can you see that? Okay. So, so these are really, they're all really beautiful uh, cloth napkins, and the nice thing is that, unlike the paper napkins, you, you can reuse these over and over for quite a while and you can just wash them, and then you just lightly iron them to flatten them out, and they're all ready to go. And they have a much nicer feel. They feel a bit more um, luxurious than paper as well. Okay, so did you have any decisions about which one to pick? And, and I'll just show them to you again then. So we have the black one, so we're gonna leave that aside. We have these pink ones, leopard stripes, and we have the ones with the musical notes here, okay? And these beautiful ones, these, you'd like to use these? Okay, these are gorgeous. They're very elegant, and uh, I think these will go great 
with um, your table setting that I see you have some sitting out over there. And we'll discuss that part later. Okay? All right, great. And uh, these are also pretty, but um, I think for an elegant birthday party, especially if you're going to be serving that spectacular bittersweet chocolate tart for dessert. These are going to look gorgeous with that dessert. Although this is for your cocktails, but you can also use these as little dessert napkins as well, if you want. Uh, but it'll match everything from beginning to end of your meal. I think this is a good choice. Okay. So why don't we discuss now the seating plan for, for your guests at your table, okay? So what I'm going to do is, you have a long rectangular table, so I'm just going to draw a rectangular box here on this sheet of paper. And so you're going to have three people down each side of the table. So we'll just draw circles here. two people at the head of each table, or the head of the, the table, each head of the table, okay? So something like that. And so now what we're going to decide is where each of your guests are going to sit. So did you give any thought to that yet? You sort of have an idea? Okay. So which seat? Uh, let's start with Gary. Which seat would you like to put Gary? This one right here? Okay, I'm just going to put Gary. All right, and let's see, and then there's Helen. Did you know which seat would you like to put Helen at any of these? Which? This one. You don't want to sit her next to Gary because they're a couple. I say, okay, yeah, it's good to break couples up at the dinner table so that they're not right next to each other. And it lets people interact better with others so they're not just insular. So uh, maybe put Helen right here so she's on the same side as Gary. Okay. All right. Just take a look at the, the guest list again. Okay, so we'll do Barbara, Jack, and Bruce next. Okay. So which of the, where should we put Barbara? Okay, oh. Right, Barbara is the birthday girl, so Put her at the head, put her here at the head of this table, okay? Okay, so we'll put Barbara at the head of the table right there. And then we have Jack. Where would you like to put Jack? In the center on this side, okay. And Bruce. Oh, Jack and Bruce are a couple. Okay. Um, let's see. So we want to split them up. So I think where we put Jack right here, it's going to be hard to split them up. So we might want to remove Jack somewhere else. So why don't we put Jack here across from Helen in this seat, and then we can put Bruce at the other side, the other end down here, and then somebody in between them. Okay. How do you, what do you think? Okay, let's do that. So I'm just going to raise this. Okay. And we'll put Jack at this chair here, and then we'll put Bruce down at the other end. Okay. Good. All right. So let's see, we've got three more to seat. And 
Carolyn, Daniel, and Diane. Art. So, where should we put Carolyn? Who should we put at the head, at the other head of the table here? Diane, okay. Put Diane there. And the other, I guess, Carolyn and Daniel. And are they a couple? They're not, okay. Um, well, that's good because otherwise they'd be sitting directly across from each other. We'd have to shovel some seats around again. All right, so Carolyn, where should we put Carolyn? Would she be good between Bruce and Jack or between Gary and Helen, do you think? Between Gary and Helen, okay. So we'll put Carolyn there. And then the last is Daniel, we'll put here between Bruce and Jack, right? Okay, all right, well there. Now, of course, what usually happens when you're designing these seating charts is that later on you'll be like, oh, wait, no, I don't want to put those. We'll just shuffle them around. And so I'll leave this with you, of course, and you can continue to refine this uh, for the next two weeks until your dinner party. And But at least you have a plan already started. And I just want to remind you to make little place cards that you can put. Um, I think I bought you a package of place cards, um, very nice ones, and you can simply handwrite them as neatly as possible. Just their first names and you can place them around the table so each person knows where they're sitting. Okay. Right. Now another option is you can simply just tell people where to sit so then you don't need place cards. So place cards are a little more formal and, uh, but they also are a little festive as well. And as this is a birthday party, I think that's okay. All right, good, all right. Okay, so I think we've got all of the details, the important details planned so far. And we have the seating chart here, and we have a list of all of the guests, their names, and the list of the menu as well, uh, what you're going to be serving for each course. And even um, you've got some napkins picked, uh, custom napkins picked out for the cocktail and the glasses picked out for the various courses of wines that you're going to be serving. So I think I've got everything to go. I'm just going to write one little thing here just to make a note about the napkins. And this can become a checklist for the day of your dinner party. And you can simply make sure that the napkins are folded or placed out uh, wherever you want them in advance so you don't forget them. Okay, and I'll put, so we're gonna pick those beautiful sort of